I come from a place of, of a journey. Um, the truth of the matter is where I'm placed and where you're placed are not very different because we're all on this journey of life, right? Sindio? And some people may think that they're wiser, but the truth of the matter is there are things that you know better than most of those who are termed as wise. True? So every person's experience, every person's life is valuable. Three things that I feel are very pertinent for our day and the lives that you're living. So the vast majority of you have not lived to see a quarter of a century. Yeah? Yeah? See how I just said that, quarter of a century. <laughs> um, in actual sense, you have, many of you have been born in the 2000s, right? Yeah, rem true? So the interesting thing is, is that even despite the fact that you're saying that you're born in the last 20 or so years, the fact is the information that is available to you is vastly more than it was available to our generation. I was born in 1983 and for the longest time we didn't have as much information and we had to grapple in the dark to be able to make sense of what the life, you know, the world around us was. But you have an advantage and a disadvantage because as you look at the world around you, the opportunity is immense in terms of getting information. True? Yes? But the question is, are you seeking for truth? Silence. Are you seeking for truth? The reason why I say this journey is for you and me is because when you read the story of Jesus, when he was 12, he went to the temple and had wise counsel with elders. 12 years, right? 12 years of age. And he was able to engage people who are four or five times his age and interact with them at a level that was above normal. Have you met such people at your age? Wise people? So wisdom is not uh, a recluse of the old. You need to understand that. It is a choice. And let me explain what that means. Um, there is, I want you to imagine in your mind, there is information, there is knowledge, and then there is understanding, and then there is wisdom. Now, information is available to all of us. Right now, if you, if, if you open your, you know, your, your pads or whatever right now, you can, you can be inundated with a lot of information, true? But the question is this, for all information, it's either the truth or a lie. Do you know that? A lie takes you deeper into the void, takes you deeper into a feeling of no control, takes you into a place where you can't actually find your purpose. And the truth on the other side sets you free. Even the Bible talks about the truth setting you free, true? So the question is, for the information that you're having, does it set you free or does it imprison you? Have you ever considered that? So unlike generations past, information is available to you, but more of it tends to be a lie, tends to be propaganda, tends to insinuate and create opinion rather than the truth. So I want you to take a moment with me here and consider that you have information that is the truth. For a minute, let's assume have the tools that can allow you to actually say, Kama ni meona movie moja, I know 90% of it is a lie, but it entertains me. But the 10% that it gives me is the truth, so I'll take that. So let's assume you know what truth is. And as you know what truth is, you turn it into knowledge. Because knowledge is based on truth. Isn't that so? There's a time in history, and please watch, uh, watch, me, watch my 15 minutes because I can, I can tend to ramble on. So there was a time in history where they believed the world was flat. Do you know that? And it was considered a, a truth until someone came and refuted it and proved otherwise and showed that it was round. People believed that if you went as far as your eyes could see, you could actually fall out of the world. So the thing is this. In your generation more than any other, you have the possibility and the ability to find out what the truth is and innovate based on that. And no one can take that away from you. Yes, there are preconceived notions about how things should be run in this world, where you should be going, 
but you can actually seek the truth for yourself. And that becomes knowledge. Now there's one thing that I need you to also know. Knowledge can be turned into wisdom. There's a difference. Do you know that? Knowledge and wisdom. Okay. So I want you to consider any entity in the world, any multinational in the world that is wildly above all the others, but they're doing the same thing. So let's look at Elon Musk, for example. That's the running currency right now. We always talk about Elon Musk. He's able to take something and do it 10 times better. True? In the Bible, who comes to mind when they say he can be able to do things 10 times better? In the Bible. Who comes to mind? Any thoughts? No, not Jesus. It's not written. Who? Uh -uh. Solomon was wise, <coughs> but he didn't do 10 times better. Who was it? Uh uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. Sasa muna patambilet. In the Bible, there's one person who was said to be doing 10 times better, and that was Daniel. Yeah? Check it out, yeah? 10 times better. What does 10 times better mean? Normally, ukisomaizi mavitabu, you know, in, in the current affairs, you'll find things written 10x. What does 10x mean? It means doing wildly different from any other person, above and beyond what they're doing, to a point where you, you, they can't even compete with you. And that was Daniel for you. And if you study the life of Daniel, the reason why he would do 10 times better is one thing. There's one thing that he did consistently. What was that? Sorry? Prayer. Prayer how many times a day? Three times. That was one element. And what was the other? He made a choice. He made a choice. So you are presented with a choice every day whether to do right or wrong. You are presented with a choice every day whether to imagine or not to imagine. You are presented with a choice every day to be your best version or not. Now the thing that I want you to understand is ukiamka subui and then you're told to, how many of us make our beds early in the morning when you wake up? Fasting in the morning. Fasting in the morning. <laughs> this was, this was not fair. <laughs> how many, how many of you make your beds in the morning? Fasting. Fasting. Okay, so a vast majority of us are go-getters. That's actually something that denotes who you are, your character. Because most people don't. And they assume that is just normal. Making your bed is Literally, you being able to circle around your day and say, the way I've started my day is the way I'll end with finishing things. Yeah? So, what I want you to understand is your choices determine where you're going in life. And your choices will be faced by many challenges. You'll go out and meet people who predominantly have no values compared to yours. You know your values can be different, right? I assume the reason why most of you are here is because you share a certain value stream. True? That's why uh, while your friends are out or your acquaintances are out having fun, you're here. True? Yes? Okay, I hope you enjoy your pali. Muna nisikiza? Tuko sao? Okay. Uh, the reason why I appreciate Lapid Leader and what you do is because I've interacted with you over the years. And in fact, some of you I'm, I'm working with right now. And precisely because of the strain that you are, your value system. And I promise you, if you're able to follow on through with your value system for the rest of your life, if you're able to make the right choices, if you're able to distinguish yourself in terms of the habits that you have on a daily basis, you will succeed in life. Life is not something that you wake up to, that you're slapped by every day. It's something that you choose intentionally to take up as a mantle every single day. So there's no off day for life. You understand? There's no day, okay, some days, you know, you might say, I, I need to take a holiday, two or three days, yes. But most times in life, you have to get up and do it. Askia, how many of you are Christians and believers? So a vast majority of you. How many of you think that things will drop into your, into your arms and you'll, you know, a blessing will come upon you without you doing anything? How many of you believe that? Okay. So here's the other thing. What are your belief systems? The reason why I ask that question is because your belief systems are based on where you grew up. When I don't believe that, but then do you go and act? 
you go and do things that will allow you to become the best version of yourself? Because you might be in families where people pray a lot but do little. You know, there's a reason why Africa we are called to, we are said to be Christians, yet uh, we find 10 churches in a slum and nothing is happening. See, you may notice. So part of your journey here is, and when I say that value strain, is because you're called upon to actually be a differentiator. A differentiator is a change maker, someone who goes and do, does something in the society that you're in. So I wouldn't expect that the only thing that makes a difference for your life is the fact that you're given a certificate today. That is just an initiator for you to go and open the doors that are available to you. Some doors will need you to kick them open. Some doors will be open to you, but you need to be ready. Maskia? Okay. So the other thing that I need to share is, which is very important, is your belief system. And I mentioned a little bit about that. Now, there are two types of belief systems. Winning belief systems and ones that are negative. I'll tell you an example. Um, I had a friend who believed no matter what that they were right. No matter what you told them, they believed that their life was okay. They would drink, they would go out, they would do life based on their, their own principle and the way, they, the way they, they thought it was okay. And what was happening was themselves with people who believe the same thing. So anytime I try to influence my friend in a certain way, I could not because already he was in a negative belief cycle. What that simply means is that your beliefs are based on your experiences. Do you know that? Do you know that? So one of the things that I encourage you to do is read. Read as much as possible, study as much as possible the world, the world around you. Because the difference between you and that person who's 45 and who's going to be your boss is what you know. And how you use what you know to get you to the next level. Do you know that? Do you know that? So be this person who's constantly studying. Because as you study, and study is not just you going to school. It's about you reading. It's about you expanding your palate in terms of what you are taking in. And as you study, what tends to happen is that you'll become educated and you'll change your experiences. You'll know why you behave in a certain way. Is that okay? Okay, so that's what you want to always get feedback from the people around you. Because right now, I, I like the fact that you guys are so energized, you are into each other's business. If you could just sustain that out of this space, so that you can be able to tell, for example, uh, someone, you know, you're not doing right by yourself. Because it can be nice to be here. But when you live here, remember you're back into the world, true? And the world out there is very? Very? Very what? Throw those words. Very? Very harsh. But you can control the things that determine who you become. So build the community that you have right now outside this environment. So, so. so um... I don't want to take too much time. How much time do I have? Five more minutes. Okay, good. So I'm going to open it up and say, who wants to ask a question? Any question? About life, about your experience here? It's a good question. And I want to take you back to the fact that if it's a negative belief system, it means that you're compounding it every time. It means that you're used to it, Sindio. So the best way is to put yourself in an environment where someone can actually coach you out of it, someone can mentor you out of it, or you can study yourself out of it. But your environment predominantly defines your belief system. So if you are in, you know, back in the hood, where people are, um, for lack of a better word, doing all the naughty, naughty things that can be allowed to be done, and if you take yourself out of that environment into another one, then that starts you on a journey of changing your belief system. That's why they normally say the difference between some ule anaka ghetto and the other side is that perpetually they'll be doing the same things over and over again. So people will become poorer because they're in the ghetto and the rich will become richer. It's a mindset thing. It's a belief system thing. So one is filled with a mentality of abundance. The other one is filled with a mentality of limitation. So if you find yourself in a ghetto and you want to be wealthy, please, you're fighting against a torrential rain. 
Change your environment. That's the first thing. Second thing is educate yourself. Um, most of us allow the world to just unacha tul world ina kuchapa everywhere. Don't don't you you have power. You have power more than you think you do. So like I said earlier, take time to study. If you believe it's 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 you who's having a problem in terms of communication, go and get someone who can coach you to be a better speaker. If you believe it's your health that is a problem, be more preventive because prevention is better than cure, sindio? Go and run instead of eating umekaapo unakula masausage na kusema yo by the way life yangu itakuwa better but then next time next time I'll change no it's now it's immediate oh, yo. <laughs> I um fortunately or unfortunately I started working uh, straight from uni in fact the first month of out of uni I was working and uh, my 20s were rough rough because I had the opportunities presented to me and I could travel I could do things and I made many mistakes many mistakes that I up to now I'm teaching my children not to make the same why because I didn't have the knowledge I didn't have the tools to allow myself to move in a different way but I guess what God has done is in my 30s he's used that because he doesn't use the perfect He uses the Samaritan woman. You know the story of the Samaritan woman. He uses her to save a town. I guess God do, does that, but you don't necessarily need to go through pain. And use the people who are around you to ensure that you have a better life. I never had a mentor until way later. Mentor here is someone who you can confide in, who you can be vulnerable around and say this is what I'm actually going through. I think you as a group can potentially have mentors yeah and you do have mentors which is powerful true so use that that's why I, for me as long as you're in lapid leader you are not you're not running of the mill kind of people the way you've been selected the way you work the things that you do you should actually be at a different level altogether let's investigate that for a minute uh, spirituality versus religiosity sindio Religion is where you go and sit somewhere and you receive. Yeah? And then you go back to life and live life the best way you know how. Yeah? Now, um the counter is this where you start on your journey to finding truth. Yeah? I decided to actually find truth. That's the reason why um some I, I and if you listen to my content for those who will have my number eventually is I share a lot every day. Uh, from Monday to Friday what I do is I I love reading so I take whatever I've read and then measure it against the bible and ask myself is this the truth or not so I use that as a basis so I I study about loneliness I study about um uh, empathy I study many different things that are very important to us but we take a soft you we live very soft lives nowadays and the problem is this if war was declared in Kenya right now do you know where you'd run to you know where you'd run to where exactly we live very soft lives like um there was a study that was done in 1940 was it 39 or 40 whereby just before guys were leaving to go out into the world americans young men who in the 30s you know 30s for america were roaring I mean there was depression yes but most of it was built around uh, debauchery drinking and a lot of party but then when the war started everyone would go to church why because at that point you really want to find why <laughs> how can i survive and if i die what will happen so that has not been presented to your generation yet and that for me is something that you need to intentionally seek because until there's something like south sudan happening right now for it will just be like ah it's life i can live life the way i want to and no one is checking you until probably you die and you have gone to funerals haven't you where your friends have died simenda so na kula life sindio nani ajoe enda funeral by the nani ajoe enda moja kuna mtu moja ajoe enda okay we tutak may it be like that but the honest truth is this people die in fact um one person said most people are shocked that they are dying when your time comes you'll be shocked that you're dying 
But I'll say this again, find truth. And for me, the truth, because you know even like right now with this gender fluidity, all these opinions and all these things, when you read them and you study them, there's a lot of confusion. But every time you come back to the Bible, you find sanity. And that's what I found for myself. This is without being preachy and all that. That's myself. And I found peace. I found my center, my resonance with a greater power. So that's my encouragement to you. What do I term as wisdom? Wisdom for me is basically knowledge built on understanding. And understanding is predicated on, on your heart. So here is what I, I believe. Wisdom has a lot to do with seeking God rather than knowledge. And there are a lot of people who are knowledgeable but not wise. Wisdom is using knowledge ten times. Actually, wisdom is using knowledge profoundly. And the only way to use knowledge profoundly is if you are attached to God because God can actually guide you. And that's why I go back to the story of Daniel because some of the things he used to do showed clearly he was wise. He was as knowledgeable and even more than all the rest. And here is the other thing. Wisdom is not only locked on to believers. Do you know that? The three wise men were they believers. But they sought the truth, didn't they? And it was a hard matter because they invested their life. Uh, wisdom calls for humility. When I say it's a hard issue, it calls for a change of your posture in seeking it. Because you can seek knowledge with an ego and pride. Do you know that? You can be the proudest guy in the room with a lot of knowledge, but you're not wise. Yet you can have someone who understands compassion, love, all these things that ideally embottle the Holy Spirit, and that makes you wise. So that's my understanding of wisdom. The second thing is about uh, half-truths, um, truths and no, and the complete opposite, which is the truth. Do you know the devil will always come to you with half-truths? Do you know that? He'll present a truth and convolute it and present you with a lie. So it's, it's a truth mixed with a lie. As the, for those who, I, I used to be a cyber security person in a life, two or three lives back, where you, I send you something that is nice, but in there is bottled something that will kill you, a poison pill. So that's how the devil works out. So those are half truths. So he'll tell you, it's good for you to be independent, but then there are all these diverse sets of things that you can do and enjoy yourself. So you always have to be open to the fact that you know the truth, absolute truth. What does it mean? The problem with our generations, mine and yours and past generations, is that we have lived at a time where we desire what is in it for me. Myself, me, myself and I, my flesh, rather than what is the truth. I, I hope that answers. Or you want me to break down what half-truths are? Or you want me to explain more on truth? Okay, that will take a bit of time, but what I can promise you is that um, for me, what I know is the truth comes from the Bible. Because ultimately, <coughs> if you're able to unpack the Bible well, then you can be able to know exactly what God desires for us in our life. And he desires the best. So with that, thank you very much for your ears, lending your ears and for your time.